The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. Before we could begin today's discourse, it is imperative that each and every believer make sure that it is under the filling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not in the controlling power of the old sin nature, which has lost its power when we believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for the process of salvation. The 40 absolutes given to each and every believer so that each and every believer can make a point to be the one whom Lord has chosen for the maximum glorification unto Christ. Every believer has been predestined. Every believer has been given the greatest opportunity of all time. Every believer in this Alekhani Ketesis period sandwiched between the two advents. The first advent of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the second advent which is going to come again. The second advent of our Lord. At the end of the tribulation, to join the Armageddon battle and deliver them and enter into millennium. Between these two advents or the rapture of the church, whichever could occur, it is the ultima of the fact and the truth for us that we have been given as a special species. Not just species, but special spiritual species. And without the true mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it is highly impossible for us to take the word of the Lord. Or in fact, even come back and look and understand what it is in this ministry of the church age. That's why we the believers have been mandated to look back and take back and understand the word of the Lord more clearly, more evidently, more accurately, only through the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and by no other means. Because we are pertaining to the things of God's word, which we are recorded and kept forever and forever, and for each and every word we are answerable to Lord why we have spoken that. So, it is imperative that you use in the privacy of your priesthood rebound in the silent prayer and get back and learn today's doctrine. Father, we're grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with you through the word. We pray as we're going to study. Help us to expose the things which are pertaining to thy kingdom, not the kingdom of this darkness, so that the people who are not aware of the reality of the truth of Bible doctrine can come to the knowledge of understanding of the Bible doctrine and give number one priority and change their thinking to the thinking of Christ. To this extent, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us and make it as a blessing and challenge sovereign Lord. For we ask in Christ's name, Father. Amen. As we are going to continue today's discourse, it is quite essential for us to note what is the doctrine and why is the doctrine number one priority? Without doctrine, we cannot come back and look and understand what is the true purpose of a believer in this earth being kept alive. But whereas with doctrine being exposed in the truth, like the Greek verb which has been used as expose is nothing but alanko. Alanko means that is exposed as by the light their true character. The word that has been used in Ephesians 5.11 tells to us, And do not have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather also reprove them. Reprove means expose them. So that for the things that are done by them, in secret it is even shameful even to say, but all things having, being, having their true character exposed, that's what Alenko, by the light, that is what by the doctrine, are made manifest, for that which makes everything manifest is nothing but the light, which is nothing but Bible doctrine. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ called us that we are the light of this world. We are the illuminators. We are the one who have to be proclaiming the truth by, their, by our holy walk or by the method of our lips when we are matching with that holy walk. 
when Lord Himself has called us that we are the light of this world, then we are. Then who are we to say that we are not the light of the world and still walk in the darkness of this satanic conflict, the constant battle that looks along, gets the gains along into the realm of your all sin nature. The great satanic conflict, which is the all sin nature, is constantly being given for us as a source of temptation, like that fruit which has been kept in the Garden of Eden. Always tempting, tempting, tempting. And the weaker vessel fell to it very clearly, we know as the Bible records it. And what is the reason that we are not capable of understanding the simple truths? The only true reason why we are not capable of understanding the simple truths is that we don't have light. Neither we are partakers of the fellowship of light, God, the Holy Spirit in our life. Neither we are aware that we have been given rebound as number one priority. The privacy of our priesthood by using 1 John 1 9, we are the people we have to come back and get back to the fellowship of Lord God Almighty so that we can gain and we can come back and expose and reprove the reality of the truth. And Satan valiantly wants to come back and give everything for you apart from Bible doctrine, apart from being exposed in the truth. Causing you to make a great error not to know the doctrine of dispensations. Causing you to a great error not to know that Bible is exegesis, which is isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of the word with the dispensing technique of dispensations. Causing you to go back into the defunct spiritual gifts, the false spiritual things, and cause you to give miracles, healings, or tongues, and cause you to tell that you are an apostle or a prophet, and cause you to tell that you are having the power to interpret the tongues and to discern the knowledge. No exposure to the truth. No elanco in their lives. Whatsoever that could be made manifested, says for us in Ephesians 5.13, having all their character being exposed, because the light are made manifested for everything that makes everything manifest or that which makes everything manifest is nothing but the light, which is nothing but Bible doctrine. Before coming to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to be controlled, it is the light ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit to give us the gospel. After getting back into the fellowship of Lord God Almighty, it is the light ministry so that we can go back and look. The enlightenment power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in understanding the scriptures diligently when we search it thoroughly. And searching those scriptures is not possible if you are still in the old sin nature. If you don't have the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, controlling you through rebound. A way to walk. What walk? Not a holy walk. An unholy walk. Because we are not interested to look upon the word of the Lord more clearly, more accurately, more diligently. What is that unholy walk, you may ask? The point is very simple and very clear. Whenever you sin either by thought, word or deed, whichever manner you take it. A simple thought, a simple word, a simple deed. Definitely causes you either to grieve Lord God the Holy Spirit, or sculpt Lord God the Holy Spirit, or even to lie, lie to Lord God the Holy Spirit so that you are out of fellowship which is contrary to the principle of Bible doctrine. Now, so many denominations, so many cults which have raised, which have become heretic not to be exposed to their true character, the failure of a pastor teacher to rightly divide the word of the Lord and teach them the truth, has caused these people not to know the real availability of the power of Bible doctrine. Hebrews 5.14 tells to us, a strong mid belongs to those who have been given the character or maturity. And he is a perfect man because he has been mature in the word of the Lord. And he is the one who can eat strong meat. Not when you're a kid you're going to take these subjects. Not when you're into adolescent you're going to take these subjects. A sincere milk so that you can get out of this hypocritical evil doing methods of your life. Aren't there many hypocrites today? Why not? Absolutely they are, including even the pastors. Live of the congregation. Whenever we do look, the members who have been attaining to the church or attaining to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, under their church. 
they can discern whether the pastor is a hypocrite or the pastor is really a person sent by the bona fide gift of Lord God Almighty. A man who doesn't change in the sincere milk by consuming it, he will never change through his entire life. When a man doesn't have proper milk to be consumed while he's still a baby, do you think all the ailments which have been required to fight against the disease or the sicknesses as he grows up? You know, there's a child for 18 years, they have to give them those things wherewith they could be absolutely fine. And every year or every month, every six months, they have some of a treatment to be given by a pediatrician. And whenever we go to look in the hospital, we do find that. And they say the best immunization for a baby would be the, would be the milk of your mother's breast. She can really give you the best things for six months. And that can have all the immunization necessary to fight all the diseases. And here, dear brethren, when you compare to the word of the Lord, the sincere milk, though we have been given the pure word, which has not been corrupted, which has not been adulterated, Though we have been given the importance of Bible doctrine in the original language of the scriptures and the true word of Lord God Almighty. Since we fail to take the pure word of the Lord and take the first sincere stage of our growth in the spiritual life or in the spiritual realm of our after salvation, we are still having the trends of hypocritical standards. We are still having the backsliding techniques. We are still liars. We are still traitors. And we are still murmurers. And give vain reasoning. Not for a reason to be grown up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, but for a reason of failure not to grow up in the region of Bible doctrine. Much of a time they take time only for those stupid and, stu and silly thoughts wherewith they think it could be absolutely great for them to learn. Dear brethren, when you fail to take the true milk, to grow up, to fight all such sorts of a immunization of sicknesses which will cause you a traps, a traps to act hypocritical like Peter, a traps to act not to be upright, not to be righteous, a trap to see that you are not interested to preach the doctrine straight what the Bible teaches to us. And the Bible tells to us in Isaiah 42, 21, in one of our vernacular languages, it's been translated very clearly. Jehovah is well pleased for his righteous sake to magnify his law and to honor his name as per a doctrine which has to be communicated or a set of a doctrine of standards which they have to be communicated. But what are we seeing today? We see in the mind of a pastor the softies of this world. We see in the mind of a pastor not a lanco, not to expose the true character under the light, which is nothing but Bible doctrine, and under the light ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, which is nothing but the controlling power ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. At least we doubt even whether they have this forties or not. To shed light. And it's really very pathetic for us to note that every time when they stand in the pulpit, when they have not had the pure milk, the sincere milk of the word of the Lord, how can they come out in their entire life from this hypocritical trends? Even pastors are traitors because they have that sort of hypocritical trends in them. And do you know why? No mastery over their old sin nature, though the old sin nature has lost its sovereign power. No mastery. Since there is no mastery over their old sin nature, they definitely fall a prey for the pride of life, for the lust of flesh and the lust of eyes. They fall a prey for the softness of this world. Fearing about the fellow men ostracism, fearing about the ecclesiastical displeasures, fearing about their income that could be cut off, not exactly carrying the burden, the mass, or the load of information, which they have to do it. 
and it's a very pathetic condition to note as they have failed to take the sincere milk even the pediatric doctors who tell the mother's breast milk will be the best one to clear all the diseases or sickness since they have failed in the first growth itself to take the sincere milk of the word of the lord they haven't come out with the drunkenness they haven't come out with hypocritical trends with their lies and in fact even in my country like india there are unbelievers who stay pure to their word who stuck to their commitment but this man never will they be though they are pastors in fact even if they are true pastors they would come for exegesis they would come back and sit the original languages of the scriptures and rightly declare the word of the lord because lord god is pleased to teach according to his doctrinal methods of standards not as per the standards of this world the people think not as per the traditions of the men that the people count not as per the doctrines of the people which could be translated for their own denominational satisfactory safe side if it is yes in the bible it has to be yes and when john 118 is very clear to the point to tell to us exegoma is the order of the day it has to follow that method alone and since pastors have even failed to take the sincere milk of the word of the lord how could they could come to take the bread how could they could come to know the understanding of the meat in ephesians 5:14 if it is bread man does not live by bread alone but by every word which proceeds from the mouth of lord god almighty said the bible no milk no pure milk consumed properly if a baby doesn't consume the pure milk of a, her mother for 6 months they say the kid will be easily vulnerable for sicknesses even here every believer who doesn't take the sincere milk of the word of the lord the pure word from the right exegesis right isagogics and right categorical explanation of the dispensing technique of dispensations the spiritual baby is also vulnerable to many sicknesses of this world the such kind of a great extension will be their sicknesses whether you believe it or not they forget that they are believers they forget that they have to shine among this perverse and crooked nature believers um, unbelievers who do not believe that they have to be flawless but they are the most flawful among the midst of this unbelieving sect The only simple reason is the pastor have been failed to communicate the doctrine. The only simple reason is that they have failed to expose the true character. The true character could be exposed only under the light shedding ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. The true character could be exposed only by the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. The true character could be taught for us only when we look back and understand the eon path which is all over in the Hebrew. the eon path is nothing but what god ordained for us in eternity past but we the men of this church age are not aware what could be the secret path what could be the ancient path and we are not aware where we are standing and to look what are our ways because our eyes have been blinded by the culprit thoughts by the selfish motives but the last patterns to be fulfilled and our eyes have been completely blinded off to the point of realization for those things which the bible doesn't have to do anything with that it's really pathetic for us to note how this man who stand in the pulpit are really standing how this man in the pulpit are really working out since the lifetime entirely rather than taking for 6 months from the mother breast the pure milk and get out of all the sickness exactly in the first 2 years of their life taking the pure word of the lord from the exegesis and get out from the first stage so that they could be registered for all the sicknesses of this world not physical sicknesses spiritual sicknesses since there was a failure to take the pure milk there is a failure for them to take the temptations and the trials which have come through in this life and it's a very great pathetic condition dear brethren for us to note 
that this man who have come here, who don't have proper right word, will be the leaders in the church, will be the pastors leading the crusades. And never will they come to the knowledge of Bible doctrine so that their true character could be exposed. Never they will come to know and to learn to understand what it is the Bible is telling to us and what are we exactly practicing in the pulpit. What is the manner of life that we are looking around only for morality? An unbeliever who is going to go to hell is far more superior morally than a believer who is going to go to heaven. And neither of them they are worried to know and to look and to understand. What are those standards which Lord God Almighty has given for us in eternity past to be concentrated? And it's very pathetic for us to note that Elenco, the Greek word used for the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit causes for us, number one, in as per John 16, 8, to show the various demonstrations. And in John 3, 20, it gives for us literally the most important point of all fact, the true character of anything, so as to convict and hence reprove by showing a man's fault. Today, men are not interested to take their fault. Neither they are interested to learn the word of the Lord. Neither they are interested to come and examine themselves under the light of Bible doctrine. When they will come to law and to examine under the light of Bible doctrine, when that God, the Holy Spirit, controls them. And how do you make sure that they have been controlled? Then they will search diligently like a deer with that pants for the water. They will run for the doctrine to search what they are, where they are. No matter however you might have to do, do, to do the things in this earth. Under the energy of your flesh, it doesn't value to you. Only the work that you have done under the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is the only reward for you at the heaven. And how much more true we have to be, how much more accurate we have to be, and how much more right we have to be, that you need to understand, dear brethren. And we are not here to claim this thing, that thing. Neither we are here to expose this thing, that thing. But we are here only to tell to you the importance of Bible doctrine, dear brethren, whether you take it or not. You have to go and examine yourself in the light of the knowledge of Bible doctrine. No other method. There is no other thing in this world that can sustain to you. If there is only one thing that could stand eternal, it is His Word. And you and I, one or the other day, sooner or later, have to come and cross-check under the light of Bible doctrine to know whether it is so or not. And if it is not in the light of Bible doctrine, then take it granted you have lost the race. So, in John 3.20, when we have, for everyone that does evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, that his works may, be, may not be shown as they are. So, dear brethren, the true character of anything as to convict and hence reprove by showing a man's fault is the exact work of Alan Co and the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And in John 8, 46, we have convinces of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And in John 16, 8, it is given, it brings various demonstrations. And in Ephesians 5, 11 and 13, it shows reprove and expose. Today, the pastors are not reproving exactly under the light of Bible doctrine. Reproving means not to rule with authority, not to cause some tyranny or anarchy. But with the authority of the word of the Lord, you lead them. And they correct themselves. If at all they want to align or merge into the realm of Bible doctrine, to the reward of eternity. And if they are not interested to merge themselves into the reward of eternity, Lord help them. It is not our duty to be worried. Our duty is to deliver the information, that's it. Our duty is to make them to know what is the truth. Our duty is to tell what exactly if our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ would be alive over here on this earth, what he would have preached. And our duty is to proclaim through exegesis what is the exact interpretation of our Hebrew in the Greek or in the Aramaic. Let the people take their own decisions with the information what we are here to communicate. And the pastor teacher duty is to communicate, communicate and to communicate. He doesn't have any other option than that. And to make a thorough communication, the dispensing technique of dispensations is the only one required for you as an indispensable tool. Without, without dispensations, no possible for you to rightly divide the word of the Lord. A sure recipe of distortion is a person when he reads Bible to himself without having the origin of the scriptures, without having the original languages, and without having the doctrine of dispensations to be the basic doctrines among his life. 
Men may think dispensation is a cult. Some other method is a cult. The reason only behind that, no properly trained pastors were not in the seminary, but by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Do you know why? Because that male believer has never recognized in his life that he has a bona fide gift of a pastor teacher to him, and it requires on his part a temporary sacrifice of his life, and sacrificing each and everything, his work is to sit and steady, faithfully being prepared. He doesn't have time for XYZ trends. He doesn't have time for personal counseling or visiting. He doesn't have time for emotional-based worship services. His only time is to steady, 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 so that when he consumes the sincere milk of the word of the Lord, which will be the primary of his life, he walks a holy walk. And what it has been required through love, through obedience, through humility, and for the necessary of the people, he will edify them. So that not only taking the sincere milk, he goes to the next further stage, which is nothing but milk, and further stage it will be bread. And the bread says, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word. There he takes doctrine as number one priority. That should be the doctrine in the original languages of the scriptures. And then later, as he grows up to the realm of the knowledge of Bible doctrine, he goes for Ephesians 5.14b, or Hebrews 5.14, which tells to us, strong meat belongs to those who are mature, who are mature, who are mature. Then he can discern what is right and what is wrong. Today, 99.9% .9 of the Christian believers have not taken sincere milk. That's why they have in their entire life hypocritical standards, hypocritical methods, hypocritical way of techniques. When they are failing to take sincere milk, how they can take the word of the Lord as number one priority, though the outward man perishes, inward man has to be renewed day by day. And how they will take the number one priority to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. How they will take the number one priority to be mindful of the words spoken by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through his prophets as well as through his apostles. The Mamnis color of doctrine. And how they will come to the perfection of the knowledge. In Hebrews 5.14b, to take the word as pure meat. A strong meat. And as long as we fail to understand the simple truths, we can never understand what it is to repro used in Ephesians 5.11. The word of repro, of which has been a great work, or expose, that is to expose as by the light, the true character. There is no other method that we can expose them apart from the light of the Bible doctrine, the true character. Many are the people who will come to the pulpits hiding their hypocritical lives not able to stay upright because they are not able to understand whether in the people or out of the people before the Lord or after the Lord they have to be always the same there is nothing that can cover you for your nakedness for your acts for your deeds everything has to be made manifested before the sight of the Lord and boldly we have been told to enter into the throne room by the word of the liar by the, by the word of the Lord so that we should not be ashamed but we should be the men who have rightly divided the word of truth. Not only through our holy walk, not only through our lips, as long as we stay alive or here, since our Lord God Almighty is holy, even we need to be holy. And there is no other method, there is no other purpose, there is no other reason that we can murmur, that we can reason, that we can look this or do this or do that. We are only here for only one simple reason, dear brethren, whether you believe it, take it or not. We are here for the maximum glorification of Christ. And to reach to that maximum glorification of Christ, we need to go through the personal sense of destiny, the first five cycles, the, the first five problem-solving devices, later followed by the next five problem-solving devices. The first five problem-solving devices which include, number one, rebound. Number two, the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who can get you to this light. Number three, the faith rush technique, the word by word which you take. Number four, doctrinal orientation. Number five, grace orientation. And when you go for this, you go to the sixth stage, which is nothing but number six, your personal sense of destiny, your hope, your absolute confidence. You hope you will recognize as a pastor teacher if you are a male believer. You are responsible to lay down upon your shoulders. What are you to be? If it is an evangelical, or if it is an administration, or if it is a gift of helps. And then furthermore, what you take, you enter into that unique spiritual life of adultery almond. 
this great unique spiritual life, dear brethren, you have to go through, you have to learn through, and you have to make number one priority for it. Follows the three stages, spiritual self-esteem or spiritual autonomy, and then by spiritual maturity. Spiritual self-esteem followed by cognitive self-confidence, followed by problem-solving device number seven and eight. Personal love towards God and impersonal love towards all mankind, followed by providential preventive suffering. When you pass down this suffering for blessing, you get to the second stage, which is spiritual autonomy. And spiritual autonomy, your cognitive independence of Bible doctrine, plus problem-solving device number nine, which is the sharing the happiness of Christ, followed by movement and testing under four categories, followed by, when you pass down this four, people testing, thought testing, system testing, or disaster testing, you will be entering into the spiritual maturity, the third and final stage, where with Apostle Paul tells, I have not yet attained this stage. I need to attain this. I need to attain my spiritual maturity over the spiritual resurrection in Philippians 3, what he writes. And this spiritual resurrection is what, dear brethren, you and I have to go through, though we have the old sin nature ruling in us. Christ was without the old sin nature, but we are with the old sin nature, and we also have the same privilege of Christ which was being given to him, the indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and we have to go through the indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit in our lives as a permanent reigning one. And this permanent reigning one, which has to be taken for us, number one priority, should cause us to control our activated human spirit, to be analyzed by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that in return your activated human spirit can control your soul, the various facets of your soul, the five facets, the mentality, emotion, volition, norms and standards and thinking, and your conscious as well. And these various facets of the soul could be brought into the control of the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to learn to be derived from the Bible doctrine, so that every thought that you get should be captivated into the thought of Christ. And though this old sin nature permanently indwells in you till to the point of your death, it has to be mastered over by the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who permanently indwells in you. If Lord God, the Holy Spirit, doesn't permanently indwell in you, if Lord God, the Holy Spirit, doesn't permanently control you by your rebound, He makes a permanent sense of indwelling in us. Indwelling is permanent, temporary is fellowship. And if you're not making sure that you have been permanently controlled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, by using rebound, make sure you are an absolute failure in the sight of Jehovah. It is no way possible for you to learn. It is no way possible for you to consume. It is no way possible for you to get number one priority for Bible doctrine. And as long as Lord God, the Holy Spirit, doesn't come to the point of realization for you to know the truth. The pen to say you're either grieving, squelching, or lying to Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but never coming to the realization of Bible doctrine. And that's a great problem in our lives. And that's a great reality which we have been ignored in our lives. Dear brethren, only we can get to the enlightenment ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, this soul, when it has been controlled by your activated human spirit. And this activated human spirit can come back to the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who permanently indwells in you. And in order to have power over your energizing ministry of your activated human spirit, it requires rebound. Make sure that you search the scriptures diligently. Make sure that you learn the doctrine diligently. Make sure that you make a point of realization of the truth diligently. No other methods, no other standards, no other techniques, no other privileges. Then what we are enjoying in this unique dispensation of the church could be ever given to any other people of any other dispensation. So when you get every thought into captivity for Christ, you are walking as per the word of the Lord. And you are making a thorough examination to be examined under the light. So that in the light you can come back and look where you are, what you are, and how are you going out. The greater our failure to cross-check ourselves every day, the greater our failure to cross-check the burden that the Lord has laid down upon our shoulders, like the great massa which has been put upon us, the greater will be our responsibility of our failure to the reality not to be made known for you. But dear brother, you and I have to be made a thorough understanding of ourselves, that it is pure word of God that we have to gain. It is pure word of the Lord that we have to put. And we have to expose ourselves and we have to cross-check ourselves. Where are we? So that we can give number one priority for God's work. Dear brethren, ponder over these things. Alan Cow, look over this. 
to reprove and to expose. In the true character, as through the light, the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Since many people fail to be reproved and be corrected as through the light and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, many cults have been raised. Many heresies have been come in the teachings of the pulpit. Many apostasies, ultimately rejection of the Bible teaching in the pulpits because they have not been here to expose because there is no exposure to be exposed. Why? The one who is a male believer, the one who has to be exposing those things by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who has been given the bona fide gift to be exposed, has become an easy prey for the softies of this world. Dear brethren, ponder over these things as we continue in the next day. With our heart, and eyes closed, the closing ones being given to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. In the privacy of your soul, you have to take the decision. Whereas for the believers, the great mandate is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, as you take number one priority, the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit, so that the scriptures could be searched diligently, and the searching of the scriptures could cause you to know Bible doctrine to be number one. And whereas for the pastor teacher, the great mandate is to carry so long and herald the word in season out of season, so that... The dam are from our witnesses in dwelling one, Bible in our hands, and the people, if there are no witnesses besides hearing, we have besides nature the entire angelic host. The great dam are from our witnesses, we need to worry whether we are rightly dividing the word of the Lord or not. In the next day, we shall continue our discourse. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that I was given to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will handle these things and make it a source of blessing and talent. Sorry, Lord, for asking question, Father.